mentioned like how it's different between maybe tourist visa or student visa. I'm assuming, and this is just my assumption, please correct me if I'm wrong, officers, the visa officers have that in mind that they know that, okay, so this person is going to go stay for, you know, bachelor degree for four years, right? So I would imagine they would take a look at it a little bit differently than they're looking at someone who is applying for a tourist visa. As you mentioned, I'm going to go, you know, I don't know, visit LA, right? To visit my family and come back in a month or two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. They, they definitely look at it differently. In general, they're dealing with a much longer term stay. They're dealing with someone who's young. And when you're 18, 21, whatever it is, when you're going away for study, you are absolutely in an optimal position to just say, you know what, I'm going to go make a new life in another place. Okay. So what they're really doing is they're gambling on you. Okay. When you step up there and you're presenting your case or documents, whatever, you have prepared with hopefully one key visa's help, you're telling them to believe you mm -hmm. about what you're presenting. And so for that reason, you know, we did a session, we did a session a few weeks back. Your presentation is essential. I mean, if you're credible, okay, because you're basically saying, I, 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year old, whatever person, am pledging that five years from now, I will honor what I say to you. And depart the United States after my student visa. So they overall have to find you very credible. The most important thing with a student visa interview is that the consular officer finds you credible. That's great. I always say that you're absolutely right. And I always say that, you know, if it was that easy that you would tell the officer, I promise I will come back, then everybody would get their visa and there would be no objection, right? So it's right. not just, you know, showing it, saying it, it's the entire, as you pointed out, the presentation, the interview, how you are, your story, your strategy of what, all the whys basically that an officer has in their mind sitting and interviewing the applicant. Right. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. And remember, for the applicant, they may have done it just this time, or maybe one other time, or maybe somebody in their family has done it and they've heard about it. The consular officer is seeing hundreds of applications a day. So they know every you know way to judge whether somebody is a serious student or not a serious student. And look, the student has gone through the process of applying for college. So they know, they're, they're evaluated. Are, are they serious? Can they, can they afford it? That's one of the things that the consular officer looks. Can they afford it? How, what kind of grades did this person get when they were in high school, okay? Or college, if they're going to graduate school. What kind of, and this is the thing we talked about in the last episode, which is really essential. What's their plan? Now, you're 18, 19, 20, you might not have a very specific plan, but you know when a good time to get a specific plan is, is when you're about to go to the other side of the planet yep. to study. Yep. and. Somebody's paying a lot of money for you to do that. So it's a good idea to have a specific plan, not just to get your visa, but to be successful in your studies. So one of the things that I know you all do is you help people with trying to like crystallize why are they doing this program versus that program, this college versus that college? Uh, why are they studying in a four-year program versus a two-year program, you know, and so on. All those things go into showing you really have put some thought into this. You're serious about this. This isn't just, you know, an excuse or a trick or a, you know, whatever to get to the United States so you can go get a job somehow, you know, or find someone and get married and all of that. And that's what they look for. They look for someone who has a, a very credible, you know, narrative about why they're doing what they're doing. And they're, they then decide, yeah, I believe this person. That's basically what happens in a consular officer, a consular interview. Consular officer decides at some point, yeah, I believe this person, let them get this visa. So, you know, that's, that's very important, you know, pretty much for every kind of visa interview, but for a student visa interview, it's critical because you're 18 and you're being asked to talk about what you might be doing five years from there in a credible way and so if you've never thought about it you're just like i don't know i'll figure it out <laughs> yeah that would be good. absolutely and that would make a lot of sense would you say because if you if anybody who's watching this if you have heard in you know different i don't know forums groups and what people talk about sometimes you hear i went to a student visa interview and it took like five minutes three minutes and they didn't even look at any documents they just said no so basically it would make sense what, what the officer at that three minutes didn't believe you, right? Right, right. And yeah, exactly. Did you get up there with, at, we just talked about the presumption of immigrant intent. That means you start out behind, you know, already. 
you yeah. got to dig your way out to just to get back to, you know, overcoming. Yeah, to zero. If you walk in there and you're thinking, well, I'm pretty much all I got to do is throw my documents on there. I had pretty good grades and I got accepted to a school and I, you know, have good, good finances. Give me my visa. If you go in like that, then the consular officer is, you know, that obviously is not a good approach. The, the better approach is to look at it in that, you know, you might have some strengths and you might not. But the big thing you've got to convince the consular officer is that you're not just using the student visa as a way to stay in the United States. And, you know, many people do, yes, get a student visa, then they get a tra practical training, then they get, you know, an H-1B work visa, then they get somebody to sponsor them for a green card. So it's not that you can't, I mean, it's not like it's a forbidden thing that you're doing, but it can't be your intention. So it, this is a challenging thing with a student visa because you try to convince the consular officer that you're not somebody who's not ambitious. You want to be ambitious, all right? Sure. You want to show you're ambitious and you're eager and you're a go-getter and everything else, but you also don't want to show them that your plan is to get to the United States and figure out how to stay there as easily as possible. Yeah, right. you no. Know? So the best thing you can come off as is a serious student who's given some thought to their study and what their study is going to do for them. That's the most important thing in a student visa, and you're right. It's more important than the documents, okay? Because if you have nice documents and you come off as, I don't really care, or, you know, this is no big deal, give me my visa, then what they're going to presume is you didn't have to overcome that immigrant intent. And you're going to go to the United States, since you don't care that much about studying, you're going to be focused on, you know, kind of having a good time, figuring out how you can stay, probably working. And so they don't want to take that gamble. So you want to be someone they want to take a gamble on.